Digital agriculture is the combination of uh, new and high-end sensors, robotics, machinery, and uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence to solve problems in the agriculture space, make things more efficient and more sustainable. Digital agriculture is important in order to uh, enable increased productivity, sustainability, and growing uh, more with less and uh, help Canada meet its climate goals. My name is Christopher Henry. I'm a professor at the University of Manitoba, and I'm in the Department of Computer Science. Uh, my name is Kevin Barron, and I'm an uh, agricultural researcher based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I have my own private contracting company called Solon Valley Biosciences that does uh, offers field research services to government, uh, university, and private industry clients. N49 Genetics is a partnership between myself and two seed growers, uh, Craig Rodell and Rick Rutherford. Uh, it was kind of established with the goal of develop uh, stress tolerant, uh, early maturing soybean germplasm for Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Soybeans are a relatively new crop and the acreage is expanding. And with, with that, there's uh, opportun opportunities to improve their performance in areas where they haven't been grown for a long period of time. Here at Emily Innovation Farms, I help uh, with a, some small plot research. And then uh, also through N49 Genetics, we've kind of interacted with Emily on a capital enablement project to develop uh, a special precision seeder for, to be applied in, in soybean breeding. My name is Leanne Carossel, and I'm the manager of Innovation Farms powered by Ag Expert. Here at Innovation Farms, we work with Rutherford Farms to provide access to innovators, industry leaders, entrepreneurs, and academics with access to technology, leading edge equipment, and production practices. We help test, validate, and demonstrate different egg technologies on a commercial, full-scale farm. It's really important to test out these innovations at farm scale really because there's a lot, there's a lot at risk to, to taking an innovation from the drawing board and then launching it straight to commercial application. There's a lot of risk in doing that, not having the right product. So I think Innovation Farms and the Emily Group act as a really great conduit to bridge that gap between, call it academia, and full-blown commercialization. This year on Innovation Farms, we're running about 20 projects. The P project that we have on Innovation Farms is a collaboration between the University of Manitoba, University of Winnipeg, and the National Research Council. The project looks at 12 different varieties of field and forage peas, and we run weekly agronomic measurements and imagery collection on the field trials. Uh, essentially, it's going to be capturing data that will help uh, streamline plant breeding in the future. Breeders are always interested in having tools that are rapid, cost-effective, you know, whether that's the new technology, AI and computer vision, whether that's an old technique that, that they rely upon, also genetics and molecular markers. But if, if they can come across a technique that allows them to make those decisions and be more accurate, they're all, all for the adoption of them. And I, and I think that's where uh, P Imaging Project could, could provide some new tools. Earlier in my career, I had some history uh, washing and extracting and examining root systems, you realize, again, this is a case of where it's very labor intensive and you, you probably can't justify the amount of time and energy to get that data. But with this type of an imaging approach, you know, what would take hundreds of man hours can probably be done in 30 seconds or a minute or with, with amazing computing power, you're getting actionable data that you'd, you'd just be deterred from doing it the old fashioned way. So it, as an example, if in, it wasn't feasible in the past, past to go through an entire field and look at every plant and determine if we wanted to, uh, if that plant was a weed or a crop and spray a particular weed with herbicide, or better yet, maybe even determine which weeds are actually affecting the yield of the crop. And so the combination of machine learning and AI and you know, robotics and advanced uh, farming equipment will enable us to do things like this that weren't possible before. I believe the, the use of technology will have a positive benefit for the environment as a whole. 
and, um, and that'll come through various applications, whether that's through plant breeding or when you're talking about the environment, that could be water, air quality, those sorts of parameters. It's not, not just plant breeding, but there's multiple applications that would benefit the environment. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are additional tools that you can have in your pocket at the farm. They essentially let us see and sense and act and analyze on things that we can't actually physically see and analyze ourselves as humans. Canada has this leadership leg legacy in agriculture and the neat thing is is that people from all sorts of backgrounds that either come from rural communities and multi-generational farms are working with people that, uh, such as myself, that had, have had no agricultural uh, experience growing up and we're working together to address really cool challenges and solve interesting problems.